Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem I got from one of my subscribers and before I will read the problem and show you solution of this problem I want to tell you that some of you may struggle with biology, genetics and some of you can be even disappointed that you do not perform well but actually not every student probably is going to be PhD and would work on some scientific work which would take him years for example to find how certain proteins interact with each other but actually there is a field in biology in genetics like selection and breeding where even average student can have a great impact on the society by changing our life for better for example, through breeding and selection. This is actually easy to do. People throughout our humankind history did this job and uh, fruits, vegetables, animals, domesticated animals look completely different than they were before domestication. And nowadays when we have a knowledge how breeding and selection works, we can do this type of work, breeding and selection, much faster and can get significant results even during the short period of time. Today's problem I got from one of my subscribers and if you would understand how to solve this type of problems, this is going to give you general understanding of how breeding and selection works both in plants and animals. So here's the problem. THC percentage per plant is regarded as a phenotype of the plant in the population as a whole, the average TAC percentage per plant is 5.8%. Plants whose THC percentage average 6.2% are selected and made to produce the next generation. The narrow sense heritability of THC percentage in this population is estimated to be 20%. And the first question is what is the expected average THC percentage among the plants after two generations of selection. Let's take a second look. In the general population, percentage is 5.8 of the THC content per plant. And we select parents for our breeding problem, of course, with a percentage that is greater than average. So let's find the difference between these two population, general population and selected parents. 6.2 minus 5.8 is going to give us 0 0.4. And this is going to be selection differential. So difference between uh, general population, mean of the general population and mean of the selected parents for breeding program. And this is going to be selection differential. This was step number one and now step number two. First of all, don't think that if we choose parents whose mean of the population was 6.2% of the THC content, that next generation also is going to have this medium or mean in the population of the THC percent content. Of course, this is going to be not so because as you see, narrow sense heritability of this trait in population estimated to be 20%, which is 0 0.2. So we have to multiply 0 0.4 by 0 0.2, which is 20%. On the scale between 0 and 1, 20% is going to be 0 0.2. And we are going to find that if we multiply these numbers, we are going to get 0 0.08. One more time, what we have done right now, we have found selection differential and multiplied it by narrow sense heritability. And we know that narrow sense heritability for this trait is 20%, which equals to 0.2. And what this number stands for, this is actually is going to be how much 
we expect improvement to be in the F1 generation. So we need a step number three. So step number three, the mean of the population, as you remember, is 5.8% plus this difference and in F1 generation, so F1 generation, we expect that improvement is going to be mean of the base population, which is 5.8% plus 0 0.08. So we are going to expect in F1 generation that mean of the F1 generation is going to be 5.88%. Of the THC content in plants. Now let me read the question again. What is the expected average THC percentage among the plants after two generations of selection? Not after one, but after two generations. So let's do our calculations one more time. Our first step would be to take a parents with a mean of 6.2. So 6.2% of the THC in plants minus, so minus average of the population, which is going to be now 5.88. So base population of the F2 gener oh, sorry, F1 generation, so it's going to be 5.88. And this time the difference is going to be 0 0.32. Step number two. Our narrow sense heritability is going to be the same. So the same 20%. So 0 0.32 times 0 0.2 is going to be 0 0.064. So compare 0 0.08 and 0 0.064. So as you see, improvement goes down. So we got some improvement, but compared with F1 generation, when we obtain F1 generation, now this number decrease, number of percentage, uh, which is um, improvement percent of the THC in plants. So it goes down. So let me add on the top F1 generation and now this is F2 generation. And step number three in F2 generation is going to be, again, base population is going to be 5.88 plus 0 0.064. So in F2 generation, the mean THC content of the population is going to be 5.88. 94% and this is going to be an answer to the first question. Now let's read the question B. Is this continuous improvement sustainable? Why is it unreasonable to expect continuous crop improvements through artificial selection? What limits artificial selection? Let's take a look at three numbers. We start with mean population which is 5.8 then after let's say one generation, which can take one year in Northern Hemisphere, in Europe, for example, in places more close to equator, like India, probably they can get two harvest per year. So it's going to be a little bit faster, but take a look after one year, THC content, we can increase to 5.88%. After two years, we can increase it to 5.94%. And as you see, after two years, increase is very small, negligible. More than that, this is not the worst part, but take a look. After the first year, we got the difference, which is 0 0.08. And on the second year for the F2 generation, we got the difference of the improvement, which is also smaller than this number. In one more year, we are going to get this number even smaller, for example, 0 0.04. In one more year, this improvement is going to be 0 
2 and then we are not going to get any improvement at all and maximum improvement we can get let's say theoretically 6.2 which is actually not big difference from the mean of the uh, base population which we start with so such selection process doesn't work for this crop so we can say is this continuous improvement sustainable or not we can say probably not because improvement is just negligible uh, considering how much effort we apply and next why is it unreasonable to expect continuous crop improvement through artificial selection I already said because this number which stand for improvement would decrease with each generation and then we are not going to get any improvement after two three more generations so we also gave an answer to this part of the question this is unreasonable to expect continuous crop improvement and the last part what limits artificial selection two factors factor number one the small difference between mean of the base population and mean of the selected parents and factor number two the small percent which stands for the narrow sense heritability which sometimes can be good 20 percent can be good if the difference would be much better for example the base mean of the population would be 5.8 and we have found parents whose mean was for example 10.8 then uh, the difference is going to be 5 and even if narrow sense heritability is going to be 20 percent we are going to get plus uh, 1 so we will go from 5.8 to 6.8 in one generation which is good substantial improvement but again if this number would be greater for example 50 percent we can expect improvement which is going to be even better even greater with each generation some of you may think can we get for example narrow sense heritability which is going to be one or 100 percent yes some traits affected by genotype only for example your blood group is not influenced by environment is not influenced how you live not influenced by your lifestyle of your parents of what you eat it's completely only specified by your genetic makeup by your genes so in order to get better results selection differential have to be greater and you also would get better results if narrow sense heritability of the trait is going to be greater the bigger this number would be the better and maximum you can get is one which is 100 percent which actually usually not the case because many traits influenced by many genes and as you remember phenotypic variance specified by two factors genetic variance plus environmental variance so this simple formula and this is all for today subscribe and see you in the next video goodbye